the speaker today. Um, I am going to get started. Uh, I can take questions afterwards in Chinese, but today I'm going to be doing the presentation in English um, because it's my native language. Okay. So, so 非常感谢 like 大家过来。我今天就是主要要用英文分享。呃，因为是我的母语，我有一点紧张，所以可能之后你都可以用中文问问题。So I just wanted to first start by saying、um, thank you so much to EF for inviting me over and even convincing me to do this talk.、Um, I'm definitely a little bit nervous、uh, because it's my first time speaking in front of this many people. So bear with me if I have any kind of brain farts or blank blank out. <laughs> And today I'm going to talk about、um, amplifying aspirations. So how can you make your dreams come true? And so this is a little bit about me.、Um, I am a partner at、uh, Sproutworks and Fan Fan. We are a healthy chain restaurant that exists in multiple locations in Shanghai and Beijing. I'm also a strategic advisor for a group called Food Heroes, which is one of the first food education programs existing in China、uh, that started at the World Economic Forum. My background also includes working at Da Shu Wu Tie, a vegetarian restaurant group that just got their first Michelin star last year. And I've also got some other cool awards and also. Became a co-author of a book last year, Influenced by Chinese.、Um, for fun, I also have my own jewelry line. I design clothing, and I like to paint. Actually, arrived to Shanghai completely jobless, not knowing what I was gonna do. So it's like a really, really big leap and bound that I've made in the past. Almost seven years that I moved here, and today I'm going to share with you how exactly I got there. And now, what I definitely want for all of the people here today is to really get something effective and something that you can apply today or tomorrow.、Um, I really, really hate wasting time. I really hate wasting time. Like I am the most impatient person ever. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that this is very, very useful for everyone in here. And if it's not, it's okay because you guys have food to eat. <laughs> okay. So it's really important that when you're trying to grow, you want to try to have a mindset that you want to make whatever is uncomfortable, and maybe taking like a half step outside of your comfort zone, a little bit more comfortable. So how do people do that? So one, the most important thing is that you need to trust in yourself and say yes.、Um, a lot of times, like I have said yes to opportunities that I literally had no skills in, and just had a really, really good attitude, which is number two. I am always about growing myself, and so that's how I've gotten a lot of the opportunities that I've had. Because a lot of the times your attitude is much more important than skills. Because skills you can always, always learn. The third is integrity. It is really important that after you commit to something and say yes, you actually follow through with it and figure out how to make it happen. And sometimes, number four, that means that you're going to have to find some really good mentors or coworkers or friends around. Because you can't make things happen just by yourself. Teamwork makes the dream work, and so you have to find your tribe. Okay. So here are just some examples of how I've actually done it. So、uh, I knew nothing about engineering, licensing, everything. Like I knew nothing. But the reason why I joined Sproutworks in the first place was because my Business partner told me that he would teach me everything that he knew, and I said yes to that. And he kept on giving me more and more things to do. 
And so now today, like, I can do a complete, you know, check of like a blueprint and actually execute an entire design into the actual concept. That's our uh, Tai Xing Lu store. Another opportunity I took was when a friend of mine who's a publisher asked me if I could help translate a book. And I was like, me? No. I, this is weird because I'm not even fluent in Chinese. And this book is in simplified Chinese. But they were like, wait, but you have background in food and beverage. You know, this book, like, we just need you to check recipes and, and check the translation. Like, the book was already in English. And I was like, well, if it's recipes, I definitely know about food. So I said yes, and then I did it. And now I'm a co-author of a book. It's a by Chinese. Crazy. And then the third one is that I actually really hate public speaking. I hate it so much, I actually said no to this opportunity at first until my good friend E.T. in the back there told me that I should take it. And I thought about, you know, what exactly is one of my goals is that I definitely want to face my fears. So that's why I'm standing in front of you today. Okay. So how exactly um, do you need to get to your dreams? Well, the most important thing is that actually you need to figure out what your dream is. Um, this is one of the best podcasts I have ever listened to in my life. I put the QR code here so that it'll, you can scan it and then you can, you can directly link to this website. Um, it is by this really, really famous, uh, she's a design professor named Debbie Millman. And it's an interview that she did with Tim Ferriss. So this, this podcast really was very life-changing for myself because it was like, you know, the bite size of it is what exactly is your dream in 10 years? Like write it out in full detail, dream as big as possible. And you write it all down and it kind of like shifts your mindset towards, okay, what exactly is it that I do want to achieve and how am I going to start getting there today? So it's a really, really great exercise to do. Okay. This is an example of my own kind of dream board. Um, I look at this every single day. And what I ask, and I also have coached people before, so I, I let them through this exercise as well. So what you do is, it's the same thing as like the dream, right? Like you write down every single thing that you ever want to happen in your life on each little piece of paper. And then afterwards, you organize it into things that look like maybe everything's around family, or everything's around work, or everything's around some other weird interest. I don't know. It's, it's something that I found has really helped me organize my thoughts. Um, and once you, you do the actual kind of like writing exercise, I found that it becomes a lot easier to actually make these things happen. So, and, and after you complete it, you can also take the little piece of paper off. So, I'm going to be taking off public speaking later tonight. <laughs> okay. So, when you think about uh, what exactly your dreams are, right, and, and that exercise that I just showed you, it actually is, is helping you figure out what exactly are your values, right? And this is another exercise that is really, really, really important to do is that you need to figure out what are the most important things to you in your life. And then afterwards, when, when you write down, okay, like this is a, a value that I'm picking and this is why it's important, um, afterwards you look at something and you're just like, wow, like how close to this value am I living today? And that's how you can start to take a look at changes. So these are my values, okay? They are living a healthy life, uh, having integrity, always learning, so education, challenges. I love to challenge myself. Um, another one would be helping others, self-development, bringing a community together, and this last one that's like a little bit different than the other ones is just fashion design. It's just that dream that I've had ever since I was like five years old, so so I left it on there. Okay. So
so these, this is uh, examples of some of the things that, like, you know, I do in my daily life and things that have come up through my work, right? My work is actually just a vehicle for me to really live my values. And so, for example, right, our mission for our restaurants is to provide fast, healthy, convenient, and delicious food to people. Like, I make healthy food more convenient for people. I am at the point where, you know, like we can really educate people on what exactly is protein or what is vegetable protein, etc. We are able to do food education programs with children where they can learn about, okay, what exactly uh, is eating healthy? What does a vegetable look like? What, where is this food from? What does this food do for me? Okay. Um, Let's see, challenges, I mean, that's a picture of uh, our restaurant in IPM called Ben Ben, and, and the sofa thing, cushions like didn't line up. I mean, there, there's like many, many, many problems and difficulties in doing stuff that sometimes you don't know how to do at first. <laughs> um, let's see, okay, so down here is one of my coworkers that I really wish was here today, but he had to go uh, do another catering. Actually, that's why I don't have any other team members with me because lunchtime is our busiest time. Everyone's working very hard. Um, and I always think about, okay, like what am I going to do to be a really, really great leader to help other people reach their potential? Like actually Ben uh, came to us because he first was just a super fan that actually used to, he used to be obese, but because he wanted to lead a healthy lifestyle, he found our restaurant, and that's how he made his life change. And, and you know, he was an intern, and then now, now he is a great team member. And so, of course, like, I want to help him, like, realize his, his dream, right? But what does that mean? It, it means that actually, like, I also need to work on myself to be a really, really good example, right? Like, of course, if people want to change themselves, like you can help them, but you also just have to be a good example and do that yourself. Um, this one is about community, right here. Uh, Nike is my favorite, favorite, favorite sports brand, and you know they saw that we were starting to really build a kind of movement around healthy living, and and they actually called us and asked if we could take part in, in some of their campaigns. So we do a lot of things things with them. And this is a photo of a whole group of people that went running, starting from our restaurants. And then the fashion design I'll touch upon later. Okay, so uh, this is the 2012 meet. Um, this is like the first time I've actually shown this to people that I don't know. And probably the first time I have shown anyone this here. So this here on the, on the side is actually like a health report. Um, I had joined a health challenge in 2012 and they did a, a kind of like body scan for you. And it basically says that I am close to dangerously obese there. Um, it says that I have 31% body fat. At that time, I was 73 kilograms. And to be healthy in the healthy range, according to this machine, I had to be 57.9 to 66. Okay, so, so, you know, like I said that I wanted a healthy life, right? And that's my value. But then here it was, this information, these numbers, numbers don't lie, right? That I wasn't living according to my value. So I had to make some really, really big changes. Okay, so first I had to decide, okay, how am I going to define healthy? Okay, for me, healthy is actually in three different categories. One is physical. Of course, like you should eat fresh food every day. Stay away from the processed stuff. And also, life is about balance. So yeah, like you can eat salads like every day, but sometimes it's okay to eat a dessert. Okay. Another one would be, you know, you also have to be mentally healthy. And what does that mean? I mean, I think for me, it means that you have goals. You're always learning. For me, I just I love painting. 
And the other one is to stay disciplined. Like you really have to have consistency in, in some of your actions as well as your, your mental thoughts. And the last one is emotional. You know, uh, I think it's really important that, that people meditate. I mean, it has helped me a lot. It's like taking a mental break and then kind of resetting and restarting. Another one would be journaling. Um, you can write down, you know, stuff that you're grateful for every day and you end on a high note. Um, as well as making sure that I spend time with friends and family as well. Okay. So, uh, even though I said that, you know, I had to make lots and lots of really, like, big changes for me to have this healthy life, Right? What I needed to do was actually turn this into a bite-sized goal. Like something much smaller that uh, isn't out of my reach. Like I can, I can get to it. Right? And so this is how you would go about doing it. My goal is I want to be healthy. Right? So afterwards I have to think about, okay, what exactly does that mean? Right? And for me, it was that I didn't want to be obese anymore, and I decided to pick that I would uh, fit into a size 8. At that time, I was a size 12. And the reason why I chose that as like a number for a goal is because I really like shopping. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that I had a long-term habit of eating more vegetables and cutting out sugar and carbs. Okay. So after you define your goal, then you have to figure out, okay, how am I going to plan for it? So for me, it was diet and exercise. Like, it's not anything different or anything new, right? Um, I basically said that I was going to eat the more vegetables, cut out the sugar and carbs, and I was going to do Jillian Michaels DVD. It's like 30 minutes per session. It's really good. Um, and very important is that I also set a deadline for myself. Every single time I have a goal, I usually try and make it as short as possible. For this, uh, because I wanted it to really turn into a habit, I was like, okay, two months. At most, I would actually set it at three months. If you put your goal, like deadline, longer, you will procrastinate. And, and I didn't want to give myself that, that extra time. Um, and another thing to note would be how do you define your goal versus a sacrifice? So the reason why like a lot of times people cannot make uh, positive changes for themselves is because they think that they're going to be losing something, right? So how I thought about it in a win and lose situation, winning would be that I can buy new clothing and have a new wardrobe. And because I'm very competitive, I actually set a bet with my friend, basically having an accountability partner, and, and this friend was like, no, like, you're going to, like, I'm going to lose more weight than you, and, and, you know, that was like a thing that I was just like, okay, I have to win. Um, so, so that really helped at the end. How I define losing, like, of course, like, you know, you can't get anywhere without sacrificing something. And of course, like, I was going to go out less with friends for dinners and drinks, right? That meant a kind of, like, lifestyle change. I was not going to eat McDonald's. What else was I going to lose is actually future health problems, right? So, you know, of course, like, if you talk to your friends and if they're great friends, they'll support you in whatever you want to accomplish, right? So those same friends, maybe you could just ask them to go work out with you instead. Um, and to understand that, like, it definitely takes a sacrifice. Like, that's, that's reality. And there is definitely a cost to inaction. Okay. <laughs> Mental mindset is also really important. So, for example, you could have the thought, like, okay, I need to meditate. I need to brush my hair. I need to make three healthy meals by scratch with organic everything. And I fail if I don't do this. I'm sure there is at least one other person that has thought this before, right? Um, and, and so an alternative to look at it would be, I'm making small steps every day towards a better me. It's okay for me to pick one thing at a time to add to my life. So it becomes a little bit easier. Okay? 
Another one would be, I won't, you know, my dream is actually to be a movie star, but I won't be one. So why even try? Like, why even bother? Now, you can also think, I also just really enjoy the process of acting, and the journey is actually more valuable than the goal. So, like I said before, right, like, uh, does anyone remember what my value was that I didn't address yet? Yeah. So, when I thought about, you know, oh, I really want to be a fashion designer, like, I don't know, I don't know how it's going to happen, but, you know, I, I would really like to. And I was like, wow, like, I never went to art school, I never studied anything about it, I just really like it. And I thought to myself, okay, maybe I have to do something about learning about colors and color composition. So I decided to start painting every day a year and a half ago. So I would start out my day maybe like 10 minutes, 30 minutes. It didn't matter. Like that was like one of my first paintings. Like it is ugly. <laughs> it is. It is. It's so ugly. Um, and and what happened was, you know, I. After, after an entire year, I put all my paintings on the floor and I looked at it and I was like, wow, like I did not get any better. Like, <laughs> I, I need to find myself a mentor. I need to find a teacher. And so I went and found myself a painting teacher at this place called Sip and Paint. Super love it. Um, and that is the picture of the first painting that I did. Now, at the same time, um, we were also building out our restaurant concept last year, Ben Ben, which is which is the food that you're eating today. So we had hired a branding agency, and they were supposed to give us options for uniforms, and they really failed. Like it was really ugly. I was really unhappy, and I was like, "Go, like, you know, I bet I could do something better." And then. I spent two days on Photoshop and Illustrator, figuring out stuff, put it into a PDF, and sent it to my partners. And that's the actual design that they approved. We actually have probably saved a lot of money too. Um, and then that's the actual uniform. Right, so I kind of became like a fashion designer anyways, even though like, you know, I was painting. And the other thing that happened because I was painting is that after I finished this one painting, my teacher said that I was super talented and they actually gave my contact to an art gallery. I have two outstanding invitations for art shows that are going to happen this year. Right. I did. <laughs> like, I never, ever, ever would have gotten there had I not just had a, a certain kind of like dream and started taking actions. Because you never know what else can happen. Okay, emotional mindset. Um, this one is, you know, everybody's in there. I just ate McDonald's, like I'm a terrible person. You can also say, I choose to forgive myself and not punish myself. You know, I can start again tomorrow. Or what about, I'm not ready to work towards my goal of whatever that may be, fill in the blank, because I am too scared to leave behind something else, right? Now the reality is pain is growth, right? Sometimes you need to face your whatever that may be, for me that was like weight loss, in order to change them, change myself because I really love myself, I value myself, I cherish myself. And so this is an example, a very real life example from last week uh, when I did all the right things. Like I prepared breakfast for myself, I meditated, I got myself to the train station on time only to find that I forgot my passport at home. Um, and so, you know, although like when I, when I first figured it out, I was like, you know, wanted to like flip a, flip a table over, but then I was like, okay, it's not the end of the world, right? Like either I can still make the choice to really like stay in that mindset where I was really, really happy with myself before I realized I forgot my passport, or I could kick 
kick myself for that one mistake that I made. Okay? So perspective is really, really, really important. And it's really important to stay positive. Okay. So like I said, um, teamwork makes the dream work, right? So how exactly can you amplify your aspirations? How can you you know, make your dreams become real. So, one, the most important is to be an active listener. So what does that mean? If a lot of people actually listen to respond. It's like they just want to tell you like what their point is, right? But everyone should try and shift to being an active listener. Like just, just listen to somebody and and maybe like give them a little bit of feedback if they ask for it. Like it's okay to just listen to someone. And once someone feels that they're hurt, they can be on your team and, and you know, maybe like when you really need them, like they'll just listen to you too. Okay? The next one would be be a white piece of paper. So this is a reminder that we all really, really need to stay humble. You know, just because like you're at like whatever kind of like level or like did all these wonderful things in your life doesn't mean that like you know everything, right? Like every single person that you meet can teach you something different. And it's also a reminder that if you have a bad day, it doesn't mean that the next day is going to be bad too, right? So be, be a white piece of paper and be really open to learning from others. Um, the third one would be be an Aikido expert, so that's like a little bit like martial arts stuff. Um, I'm not saying that you should actually practice the martial art unless you really want to, but it's so. So, for example, you know, actually for me, because I'm relatively young, and maybe because I'm a girl, a lot of the times when I go into meetings, people think that I'm an assistant. Uh, they think that I'm not the decision maker. They think I know nothing, and it it it's like it's like almost like the majority of my experience actually. Um, and I could say that wow, like you know, like it is really unfair. Like life is unfair. Like why can't people just treat me at you know the kind of level that I'm at? Right? I could think that way, but I don't. You know, I I get it. This is just some, sometimes like how, how people act. So what I do when I'm placed into situations like this is that I use it to my advantage, right? I can be that white piece of paper. Maybe like, you know, I'm having a meeting with this person for a reason. Maybe they're an expert in what they do. And so I always say like, okay, like why don't you teach me or what can I learn from this person? And again, like that's how I've gotten a lot of people that are, you know, experts or on on some kind of like level, like you know, they they definitely knew something that I didn't, and that's how I learned from them and also got their support. Okay, number four would be be deliberate in choosing your environment. This one's super important. You are the average of the six people that you spend time with. So you have to make sure that you're around people, for example, if you want to become healthier, like, yes, like, I should hang out with people who like running, or I hang out with people who also like to eat salads. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, these are just small examples, but it's really, really important, like, especially if, you know, you have some friends that maybe have, like, really, really negative mindsets, like, you're complaining all the time, you need to get out of that. You really do. Like, it, it affects you. Okay. Number five is uh, be a doer. So it's really, really great to have dreams, but you actually have to do the work to get there. Like you can't just talk. Like you have to do the actions. Um, and the last one. So this is actually just a, a painting that I made. That it's the last thing that I see every day before I walk out my door. Um, it's, is it a dream or is it a goal, right? Because I know that 
I need to turn my dreams into something that's real. So I have to take action today. And that's it. Thank you very much. Everyone, you're welcome to add me on WeChat. That's my Instagram account and the restaurant stuff. And I am open to questions or conversation. Yes? I have a question on, to start all this, you start with your values, right? Yes. Um, do you have uh, <coughs> tips you want to share on how you define your values? How do you find them? Yeah, uh, okay. So I'll go back to this slide. So the question is, how do I figure out my values, right? Um, so this document I'll actually send to you afterwards, and so it's a list of, I think, close to like 80 different values. So what you would do is that you read through all of them, and then you, you, you know, basically have to think really hard which ones do I like the best, and then figure out why it's important to you as well.